It's just like he's a salesman trying to go door to door. He has to create a need for his product because if he doesn't, then that dude's out of a job and he's probably, you know, selling hot dogs on the sidewalks. That's really all that he can do at that point. And because he knows that and because he understands that his livelihood is tied into that, he's constantly finding things that are not racist and declaring them racist. So he saw a news article. It's like, oh my gosh, this is an article about race. He thinks that every single one of those would prove his point anyway, so he just tweets it out, thinking that somehow it helps his case when actually it destroys his case and his worldview. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> and today's daily dose of stupid, Ibram X. Kendi, which I know is going to surprise nobody when it comes to him being in the daily dose of stupid. So for those of you who don't know, Ibram X. Kendi is a radical. He wrote a book called Anti-Racist. He's actually the one that coined that term. And so you hear this term anti-racist and anti-racism. He's the guy that came up with that. He's a professor and basically spends all of his time just finding things to be offended about online. That, that is pretty much his job description at this point. And then he occasionally goes out and gives like public appearances and talks about it. But Ibram X. Kendi has done this. He's also the guy that wrote Racist Baby. I'm not kidding. This is a book for literal babies, infants, to teach them how to not hate black babies, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I looked through it. It's it's ridiculous. But same guy. This is the same race baiter that he's always been. And so Professor Ibram X. Kendi tweets this out the other day. And I mean, you just got to love this. Check this out. He says, more than a third of white students lied about their race on college applications. And about half of these applicants lied about being Native American. More than three-fourths of the students lied about their race were accepted. The fact that he doesn't see why this cuts against literally everything that he's been complaining about the entire time he has been in the public sphere. like It's not even because it's of course it's a dumb thing to bring up. But the fact that he tweeted it out thinking this was a thing that helped him, it's almost as good. I won't say quite as good, but it's almost as good as when Elizabeth Warren came out as like, yeah, I'm one 100 or 1,022nd Indian. Yeah, see, I'm totally Native American. It's one of the hardest cell phones I've seen in a long time. And that is saying something, considering I follow this stuff all the time. Ibrahim Skinny just destroys his entire political ideology in a single tweet, and it is just delicious. Because if the white kids are lying about their race and saying that they're black on applications or Native American or Asian or whatever, and that's helping them get into college, that means not only is the college board not racist, it means that the white kids actually see an advantage in not being seen as white that it would be better for them to get into college. It would be easier to get into college if they weren't just white, if they had some other race mixed in. <laughs> so it just completely blows up his entire worldview. Yeah, uh, that, that white privilege really helping out the white kids that are like, I'm so white privileged that I should probably lie about my race so that I have a better shot of getting into college. <laughs> and I mean, since I already brought up the Elizabeth Warren thing, it is the same thing with Elizabeth Warren. Like she wanted the prestige and the advantage of being Native American. So when she was a professor, she actually applied for that job under the false premise that she was Native American. She wrote a book, I kid you not, uh, Pow Wow Chow, which is, <laughs> I don't know, no real Native American would have named a cookbook that. <laughs> but, um you know, basically going off of the idea that she was Native American, her university would introduce her as the first Native American professor in their college. And so uh, she she lied about it on the bar. Her, her Texas bar application, because she used to live in Texas, actually said that she was Native American. She lied on her bar application, which, by the way, should have been, you know, grounds to disbar her and pull her bar license. I don't know why they didn't, but regardless, that's where we stand right now. 
But anyway, it's just hysterical that there are these constant stories showing the exact opposite of what they do. And not only does Kendi not have an answer for it, he mistakenly thinks that it helps him out. He tweets it out thinking somehow this proves that racism is systematic when actually it proves the system is the opposite of that, that it actually favors minorities. And because of that, white kids thought that it would be easier for them to get into college if they were to just pretend that they were not white. Um, but, but here's the thing about Kendi. His entire career, his entire career revolves around finding racism. If I hired a guy tomorrow and I said, your job is to find Sasquatch. I will pay you as long as you continue looking for Sasquatch. You don't think at some point he's going to come back with the Sasquatch picture? Because, or, you know, something he thinks is Sasquatch. I mean, he might even fake it. I don't know. Kind of like the old uh, Bubba Watson with the news thing. Um, but, you know, they will manufacture incidents of racism because the demand for racist incidents is, is much higher than the actual supply. But my point in all of that is, if your job is to just constantly look for ways that different things are racist, of course he thinks everything is racist because his job depends on him finding incidents of racism. You know, if my job depended on me finding Sasquatch, you better believe I'm coming back with a picture of somebody in a gorilla suit. <laughs> like, that, that's just how this works. If you're constantly looking for something, of course you're going to find it. And that's why there's whole groups of people now that have jobs literally dependent upon them finding incidents of racism. That's all Al Sharpton does is he waits for something, somebody to say something or do something he perceives as racist, go to town, whip everybody up, he collects his paycheck, and he goes home. That's how it works. He wouldn't have a job or be relevant in any way if racism were not a major problem. And because it's not a major problem, he has to manufacture incidents of it actually happening. And Ibram X. Kendi is no different. And, I mean, the perfect proof of this is actually right from Ibram X. Kendi's book, Anti-Racist. Because if you read the book, there's actually a paragraph that basically says, how do you know whether or not you're a racist? And I kid you not, this is the actual explanation. Well, if you say that you're a racist and you acknowledge your white privilege and racism, then you're a racist. And if you deny that you're a racist, well, then you're also a racist because that means you're denying your own white privilege and racism, which makes you a racist. And so there's no way to not be racist. That's the point. You are a racist no matter what you do. There's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can do. The jury is out. We have sent you guilty before we've even heard the case. That's how Ibram X. Kendi's worldview operates. Everything is racist. Everyone is racist. And the system is racist because his job depends on it being that way. I mean, you know, it's, it's just like he's a salesman trying to go door to door. He has to create a need for his product. Because if he doesn't, then that dude's out of a job. And he's probably, you know, selling hot dogs on the sidewalks. That's really all that he can do at that point. And because he knows that and because he understands that his livelihood is tied into that, he's constantly finding things that are not racist and declaring them racist. So he saw a news article it's like, oh my gosh, this is an article about race. He thinks that every single one of those would prove his point anyway, so he just tweets it out. Thinking that somehow it helps his case when actually it destroys his case and his worldview. A similar thing happened. Lauren Chen, for those of you who don't know, she's a younger conservative, has a talk show on The Blaze. Uh, one of the most gorgeous women on earth and uh, brains on top of that, the Lord gave to her with both hands. So this is Lauren Chen tweeting out, and by the way, she is part Asian. So <laughs> this is great. This is a graphic that she tweeted out a picture of at the University of Maryland talking about the demographics of their college applicants being accepted. The same thing that Ibram X. Kinney was talking about. It's not the same study, but it's the same idea about college applicants. You'll notice there at the bottom that white or Asian students is a category. So there's students of color minus Asian, and then there's white students or Asian students lumped together. And the reason Lauren Chen is, is pointing this out, Asian group, uh, Asian group with whites excluding people of color. I mean, it's, it's just more of the same thing. You see, because they want everything to be racist, they couldn't possibly have Asians grouped in with people of color because then it really wouldn't look all that one-sided. It wouldn't look like, you know, racism is actually happening. And the reason is because a very large percentage of the Asian population, actually higher than whites, wind up going to college and getting degrees. And that's because their culture really emphasizes education, and that's a good thing. But it also proves that 
being a minority is not what's holding you back in the United States of America today. Remember, these are people that as recently as the 1930s and 40s, we were locking up and putting into concentration camps because FDR was afraid that they were Japanese spies. Don't tell me people haven't discriminated against Asians. And what was it like last year where the left was talking about Asian hate because of those Asian massage parlors that were under attack that it turned out it had nothing to do with race? I mean, it would have been terrible if it did, and I wouldn't say that it was impossible, but when you actually look at the facts of the case, turned out it actually had nothing to do with the fact that they were racist and everything to do with the fact that this guy was just a sexual pervert and wanted to kill, you know, people for not being willing to be prostitutes. Anyway, I know, weird story. I didn't mean to get off on that. But the point in all of that is, if that stat excluded Asians and put them in the people of color category, as opposed to the white category, it would look pretty even. And they can't have that because then that would suggest that the system isn't really racist. So what they have to do is they have to lump the Asians who are overachievers in with the white kids to make it look racist. That's what's going on here. It's, it's really just hilarious. And I don't know if you know this or not, but they actually have had court, court cases where Harvard was trying to make the case that they should be allowed to keep Asian students out. They discriminated against Asian students because they had so many of them in the, uh, the, that were applying to college there. And so many of them were getting in. that They actually had a court case to try to say, we can discriminate against Asians and use their race against them. And it also reminds me of a campus reform video. I didn't have time to show it. It's about five minutes long, but it's very well worth the watch. So what they do is they went down to the University of Florida, big SEC school, and they talked about, well, should we have diversity quotas for college admissions? And every student was like, oh, yeah, we definitely need those. We need to ha make sure that our student body is diverse and all this stuff, and everybody should be represented of the, the population they have there. And she said, okay, well, do you think that that should also extend to university activities like football? And they're like, no, that's skill-based. And that's a, we should just be worried about getting the best athletes for that. Well, isn't school supposed to be skill-based? Isn't that supposed to be, shouldn't we be just getting people that are academically most fit to be in college? And all of them were, well, I don't know about all of them, but most of the people that they had talked to earlier about that were like, yeah, I kind of see your point. If it is supposed to be skill-based and it, you know, if workplaces are supposed to be about work and performance, maybe we should just get the best people and not worry about the skin color. See, because they understood then that if we had a, a football team that had to ethnically reflect the area, it'd be mostly a bunch of white dudes. And, and one guy even quipped, and he was right. He's like, when was the last time you saw a prominent Asian football player? And there's not many of them. There's really not. And his point in all of that is, why don't we just get the people that are best at football to be on the football team, why don't we just get the people that are best at academics to be in the universities? Why don't we just judge based on that? That seems to be a winning strategy. The best person gets the job. But the ultimate, you know, takeaway from this, I guess, with Ibram X. Kendi, this dude is like the living personification of postmodernism. And the reason that I say that is he just sort of cloaks himself in the veil of academics you know, that I'm a professor and I study this stuff and I'll, to hide the fact that he's kind of a moron. I mean, to read this story and not, I don't know if he actually read the story, but to read this story and understand and think that this somehow helps your case and not even realize that it actually cuts against literally everything that your career is built on. And for him to not be able to see that, that means he's not that smart. This guy's kind of an idiot. And this really puts that on display, but because he's able to veil himself in academia, which postmodernism does, it tries to veil itself as a new idea and something that's very highly academic and straight out of the universities. It doesn't matter that none of it's true or that it doesn't make any sense. As long as it has the stamp of approval of the academic elite, well, then it must be gospel. That's what Ibram X. Kendi is. He's an idiot pretending that he's very smart because he can yell racist at people. That's what he does for a living. <laughs> and somehow that makes him worthy to be employed at a major university. He's kind of like, if you've ever seen Harry Potter, Chamber of Secrets, which is one of the better Harry Potter books and movies, 
Chamber of Secrets is so good, and one of the reasons that I like it so much is because of one of the villains. And he's not even really a villain in the mo most traditional sense. He's just incompetent. His name is Gilderoy Lockhart, and I mean, Ibram X. Kendi is just like the race version of that guy in Harry Potter. If you know anything about that story, Gilderoy Lockhart is has been has made a name for himself as being an expert in defense against the dark arts, and he becomes the defense against the dark arts teacher. He's a celebrity because of how good he is at tracking down evil wizards and taking them out. He doesn't actually do any of that. What he actually does is he casts memory charms on people that did those things and then steal their story. <laughs> And that's what Ibram X. Kendi does. He, you know, is is taking on the mantle of being this highly academic, intelligent, you know, thought leader. When in reality, he's not really all that great at thinking. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see... I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?